Welcome to our review on inherited disorders. First thing we need to understand then is that when we're talking about inherited disorders, they are ones that are caused by faulty genes. So you've got three examples you need to remember for your exam. Red-green colour blindness, cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia. What we find is that many of the faulty alleles that cause inherited diseases are recessive alleles. Not all of them, but many of them. Now, what you'll find as a result of that is the only way you can actually suffer from the disease is if you have both recessive alleles. If you only inherit one of the recessive alleles, then you become what's called a carrier. So you don't show the symptoms of the disease yourself, but if you do have a child with someone who is also a carrier, then your child may have the disease. One thing we need to remember is that not all of the mutations that have occurred over the years have been problematic. There have been some that have been very beneficial to us. So I'll give you two examples here of beneficial mutations. The first one is skin colour. So what we actually found was originally, obviously the human population originated in Africa, where darker skin colours were much more beneficial to us. Because the darker the skin tone, then the more protection we had from the intense sunlight there. However, as the humans migrated away from Africa to areas that had less intense sunlight, then that dark skin was not such a benefit. In fact, having paler skin was more beneficial. And the reason behind that is that the pale skin allows the sun's rays in those less intense areas to penetrate the skin to make vitamin D. And we need vitamin D to prevent a condition called rickets, which basically leads to the bones becoming softer and therefore bowing in the legs and so forth. The second one we will consider is the FOXP2 mutation, which was actually a gene that enabled the human race to then begin talking and develop speech. So if we hadn't had the mutation of the FOXP2 gene, we wouldn't have speech and we wouldn't be able to talk to each other as we do today. What we have here is an example of the type of question they may ask you on your exam paper. So they would give you some information in the question that two carriers of cystic fibrosis want to know the probability of their child having cystic fibrosis. And then you would be asked to draw a genetic diagram and then work out the probability of one of the children having cystic fibrosis. So we'd set it out just like we've done before with one of our little genetic diagrams. So what I've done there is I've shown you the Punnett square. We've got the father on the top and the mother on the left hand side. The question tells us that they're both carriers, so we label them as carriers and we write out their individual genes. So they each have one capital C and one lowercase c because they have one of those faulty alleles each. Then we fill out the table using obviously the ones at the top go into the two beneath and the ones on the left hand side go into the two cells to the right. And then you can see I've done them in different colours so you can identify where they go. Don't forget to label what the actual phenotype is so what's the characteristic they show so if we've got the top left box first of all with the two capital c's then that is the normal one so that one has none of the faulty alleles present they are normal the bottom right is the person who has cystic fibrosis because they have both of the recessive alleles and the other two the bottom left and the top right box there has one normal and one recessive. So that means that what we'll find is that they are both carriers. So if we actually work out the probability of the child having cystic fibrosis, then it's only one out of the four, which gives us a 25% chance. And you can write that as 25%, one in four, one over four, anything along those lines at all. You've got a 50% chance of being a carrier for the condition and a 25% chance of being normal. So remember, this is something that will be the same in any of those pregnancies they have. There are some issues surrounding inherited disorders because these days we have the ability to carry out genetic tests to identify if people are carriers, if they've got these inherited conditions or if the children are likely to develop these inherited conditions. Now, before people go and have these genetic tests, there are a few things they've got to consider. First thing is, if they go and have one themselves, should they tell their partner the result if it's a negative result there? So obviously, if you find out that you have a certain inherited condition, would you then tell the person you are dating that you have that or do you keep it secret from them? 
Second thing is, if you're in a relationship and you're considering children, are you going to actually both have a test to see if you're carriers of that same disorder? Obviously, in that eventuality, if you are both carriers, then there's the risk your child could have the condition. And a third one there is, should you test the fetus if you do get pregnant to see if they have an inherited condition? And then in the eventuality that they did turn up with that test as having that condition, you'd have to consider termination. So do you want to abort that child if it's got something like cystic fibrosis or not? Now, what we'll find is there is no right or wrong answer to any of these. It completely comes down to your personal choice. And this could also be linked into your own religious beliefs. Now, to try to help people make sense of all of this, then we do have genetic counsellors who will give them more information to try to help them make an informed choice. But bear in mind that it's not going to be one right or wrong answer at all. It's purely going to come down to what is your personal choice and that may be affected by religious beliefs.